Hey, what's up amigos? Today I'm going to show you how to edit this photo and get that high key look in Adobe Photoshop. All right, we'll carry on where we stopped last time. In the last video, I've showed you how to remove the rig and I explained what are the rig components in this video, I'm going to show you how to actually uh, finalize the edit and get that high key look. Now, before we start, if you remember, I had some sensor dust that I had to, well, we need to remove. And unfortunately, it's not very visible right now, but once you add contrast, it's all over the place. What I usually do is enable a check layer, and that's a Photoshop action that I have. I'll leave a link to the uh, action in the description below. Have a look at it and uh, let me show you how that works so i'll go to the actions and then create a check layer and i'll just play it and i'm just pressing enter as i go now if you enable everything you see a lot of things you can see the the dust here but there is better way to see it more clearly so you you got this and if you invert you got that and that's how I usually start cloning them out all right now that I have the check layer enabled and I can see the spots and the image what I can do I either use the clone stamp tool or the spot healing brush tool and I'll be using the spot healing brush tool because it's just faster for this tutorial. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a backup of this layer and I'll just brush over these spots. There you go. And sometimes it would leave marks because now we're asking Photoshop to select the areas on its own in terms where it's going to clone that from. Unlike the uh, healing brush tool, what I can do is ask Photoshop, for example, I need to uh, sample from this area and then clone it out. There you go. All right, that was a lot of dust. I don't know what I was doing with my sensor. However, I cleaned it and that was an old shot. So let's disable the check layer and see the before and after where it's not very visible, but let's re-enable the check layer before, after, before, after. Of course, you can spend a lot of time on making this perfect, but for this tutorial, we're just going to move forward. All right, I'll start this edit by desaturating first the road and then I'll desaturate some parts of the car and that will help add up to that look that we're looking after. So I'm going to create a new blank layer. I'll set it to color. I'll show you two ways of desaturating and this is one way. So I have a new layer with a and I assign the blending mode to color and then I'm going to paint it with black. Make sure you select the brush and make sure smoothing is low because and as you can see, I'm desaturating the road. Let's do it roughly right now. All right, so this is one way of doing so. The other way now, if you look closely in the car, there is a reflection of the sun and it has a color, a color cast, which is about red. So I'm going to add a new layer, a hue and saturation, and I'm going to uh, basically select the color and I'm going to increase that range. 
and I'll desaturate. And now I'm going to well, basically invert the layer and I'm going to brush it in. So with a flow of around 50% is very forgiving in case you did a mistake or so. You wouldn't want to brush the red of the tail light or these elements here. So I'm going to just roughly brush. You can make a better selection. All right, now that we're done desaturating the image, or sorry, the car or parts of the image, I'm going to add a contrast. So I'm going to create a stamp visible layer, visible stamp layer, whatever they call it. And I'm going to filter neck collection and color effects pro. All right, I'm going to play around with settings. Let's see if I want to remove any other color cast within the image. I think 28 is good. Correct contrast. Around 17. And then dynamic contrast around 28 is good. Click OK. All right, that's the before and after. Just a bit of contrast there. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna head to the filter and camera raw. And what I'm going to do is blow the highlights up a bit. Say 19 and then freeze the white. What can I do as well is create a graduated filter, bring it down from up above, and we're not going to darken. So let's reset this. And for some reason the reset doesn't work, so I have to do it manually. And I'm going to desaturate. Around there is fine. Good. Click OK. Now I'm going to add a dodge and burn layer and I'll do a fill with a 50% gray and set the blending mode to either soft, light, or overlay. Of course, overlay is more intense in terms of effect, but you can always dial it down. And so I like to brush flow of two to three percent switch to white we're going to dodge and then select the areas that you want to dodge things like the wheels like so and I'm going to show you a before and after of this part this is the before this is the after do the same here have it here there. And I can uh, add some smoothing and that will enable me to get like straight lines instead of using the pen tool for a selection.
All right, so if you did not catch up with what I was doing in terms of dodging and burning, I have an entire video explaining this. I will leave a link to it in the description below. All right, now that I'm looking at it, I still feel we did not get rid of the reds on the side of the car, and we can't go back to this because we created a contrast layer on top of it. And I don't want to duplicate this. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new hue and saturation layer. These settings or adjustments should sit on the top of your edit and shouldn't be blended with them. Lesson learned. So I'm going to select the uh, reds. I'm going to desaturate. And I'm going to select, of course, the yellows because that's part of the reds. I'm going to desaturate as well. Any other th things that we could desaturate? Maybe magentas. Okay, and I'm going to invert. And uh, select a brush. For 48%, and I'm going to brush away. Yeah, that's better. Now I could have desaturated the entire color spectrum, but I didn't want to get rid of the blues because I need it. It looks good with this edit. All right, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to adjust the reds in the tail lights. So I'm going to add a Selective color. I'm going to choose the red. And right now I'm just eyeballing it. Let's see the before and after. So that's the before. That's the after. That's good enough. We can, of course, mask this to the selection. And uh, let's invert this and then add a mask and brush it in. All right, next I'm going to create a new layer. Select a brush. Have a flow of let's say maybe let's start with 20 and see how that looks and make sure it's a very soft brush and we're going to start here I'm going just to start adding a bit of white and I'm going to make a smaller brush smaller brush smaller brush bigger bit. It's cool. One big brush. I'm going to decrease on the flow and a couple of those there. Maybe one around here. You can improve this by adding a mask to this layer which we have the fog or the white color and uh, select a brush a black brush and uh, try removing that fog of the car by brushing on top of the car with a flow of nine and that looks pretty now back to our dodge and burn layer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select a brush and uh, flow of three. Let me disable this for a second. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to emphasize the lines on the road so just to make them pop. So make sure it's a black brush. And then 
Let's just dodge. Make sure you match the lines on the road. So a smooth thing. That's cool. Oops. Brush again. Alright, I'm gonna lower it down. I'm just going to brush away. Alright, I think that's good enough. You get the idea. And now we're going to save the photo and take it to Lightroom to finalize the edit. All right, now that we have the car back in Lightroom, what I'm going to do is add a bit of clarity. We're around there is good. I'm going to darken the ground. Like I usually do. Exposure of it down. Wax. Shadows and clarity. Bit of sharpness. That's done. And I'm going to add a bit of sharpening by moving the slider. I'm going to mask this out. Just like so. And we're done. All right, amigos, and that's how you edit such photos in Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Lightroom. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll be seeing you at the next video, let me go.